Hey y'all, it's Kelly from Dixie Darlings Tumblers here. So y'all know how I love my vinyl from the Vinyl Cottage. And April a few months ago, started talking about doing a mystery box. And I was so excited about that. I thought, oh, this sounds so much fun. What are we getting into here? So she had the great idea to come up with a mystery box that would include pattern vinyl along with solid color vinyl, some decals, some glitter, and some acrylic blanks. And that way they would all coordinate and it would kind of take the guesswork out of things for people that really struggle with that aspect of designing cups. So I thought it was a great idea. Her first box was Halloween themed. It turned out so cute. And so when I started thinking about how I could use her patterns, I had just fallen in love with these Metal Smith paints from Miss Lillian's and I, Cindy at Southern Belle Glitter turned me onto these. And Susanna Renaud is actually the first one that turned me onto these. And I was like, oh my goodness, I have to try these paints. And so the first time I tried them, I've been hooked ever since. So when I saw these patterns from the Vinyl Cottage, they had this beautiful purple lavender color in there. And I thought, oh, this is gonna be the perfect thing to split a cup and add some patina paints on the top. So I'm actually gonna work on two cups here today. A lot of the areas of the cup, I will kind of go through very quickly and I'll refer you to other tutorials that I have done. Like I'm gonna do a split cup, so it'll be a partial vinyl wrap and partial in the patina. And then the other one I'm gonna do a three-way split that just has a patina stripe around the center. So when I'm doing the vinyl wraps, a lot of that I will go through pretty quickly, but I will direct you to other tutorials that I have done that'll go more in depth about those certain areas. And then I'm gonna do a power wash over one and I'm gonna add a water slide on one of them. And then the other one, I'm gonna add one of her adhesive decals. So I'm so excited about how they turned out. Thank you so much, April, for doing this. Um, if you haven't checked out her website, make sure you do. And then stay tuned because she's going to have another one coming out before Christmas on these mystery boxes. So I can't wait to see what she does for the Christmas one. So thank y'all so much for watching. As always, ask any questions. And I will list all the products that I use in the description box below. So y'all make sure to check out those links. And I'll include some discount codes for you guys as well. Please join my Facebook group, Dixie Darlings Tumblers. We have so much fun on Sunday nights, y'all. It is just my favorite favorite day of the week to interact with everybody and then please share your creations with me. I love to see what you guys come up with. Please like, share, subscribe, all that fun crazy stuff. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss my future tutorials. Thank y'all so much for watching and I hope you enjoy it. So today we're actually going to do two different size cups. We're going to do, we're going to start with the 24 plump and I'm going to do a split vinyl wrap on the 24 plump. And then we're going to do a true 22 also. So I'm basically just taking, I just happen to have this leveling ruler, but you could take basically any kind of ruler. I'm just measuring the length of the cup and I'm going to just split it right in half. And this cup is eight inches. So I just mark it off at four and I just kind of hold my marker up against this ruler and just rotate my cup around. I'm going to tape it off so I can kind of eyeball it a little bit just to make sure it's pretty level, but this is kind of my starting point for where I can put my tape. So there's all kinds of little tools and gadgets you can take. I've seen people take Legos and just sit your pen on top of that and make your mark. And then I'm just gonna take my painter's tape here and I'm gonna wrap it right around that line that I just drew with my marker so I can have an edge where I'm gonna go in and cut my vinyl. I'm gonna place the vinyl on the bottom of this cup and I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly. There, I do have some other vinyl wrap tutorials and I'll uh, link them here and then I'll also link them in the description box below just because I really wanna to get to the patina part of this, which is something that I haven't done a tutorial on and I am by no means an expert. It just happened to go really well this time and I'm completely in love with the look that you get from these. So I'm gonna take this first vinyl pattern and this is all from the mystery box, the vinyl is. She did two pattern vinyls and then one sheet that's a split. So you actually get four different patterns in the box. And I just decided to take this one and use the bottom part of it where the cauldron and the meat of the vinyl, the pattern on the vinyl was here. I'm just using my Cricut cutter here. I'm gonna cut it in half and then I'm gonna place it right around the bottom of the cup, make sure it's level. And then I'm gonna take the very edge of it off and go ahead and continue to press it around the cup. This is just to make sure that I don't take the full vinyl sheet off the backing before it's level on the cup, before it's straight on the cup. So I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of overlap over the tape where I can go back and trim that off and then enough to pull around the bottom of the cup as well. So I just kinda make sure that's straight and then I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to wrap this around the cup and then trim off the excess where the tape is and then trim off the excess after I pull it around on the bottom of the cup. And then like I said, all these vinyl patterns are from the Vinyl Cottage. I'll link them down in the description box below along with a discount code for y'all. And this was from the Witchy Woman Mystery Box and they're all Witchy Woman 
01, 05, and there's a half sheet that has Witchy Woman 02 and Witchy Woman 03, and they are uploaded on the website. And there are also two polished metal adhesive vinyl solid colors in purple and rose gold that I just didn't use, but they were included in the mystery box as well. And then she did include two glitters that were Glitter Champ Champagne Ultra Fine and Medusa Color Shift Ultra Fine. They were both beautiful colors. I just decided that I wanted to do the patina on this, so I didn't use glitters. So now that I've got the vinyl wrapped around the cup, I am going to go in here and tape off the bottom. So you're going to, once I get the paint on the cup, I'm actually going to go in and spray an activator to make the metal and the paint react. So I wanna make sure that my vinyl's covered up here. You always wanna make sure to cover up your any kind of surface area that you're working on, and I definitely wanted to make sure that none of it got on the vinyl. So this is Mrs. Lillian's Metal Smith, and this is the primer. So I've basically just sanded this cup, and then I'm gonna paint it with this primer. And these paints can be found at Southern Bell Glitter, and they actually have sample kits that you can buy that come with two paint colors and a primer and then the activator. So there'll be four pieces to this little, to the sample pack, and it'll be your two paints, your one primer, and then your activator. So once I've gotten my vinyl taped off really well and covered up, I'm just gonna go in with the primer and I'm just gonna paint a pretty conservative coat here. Nothing too crazy. I don't want it too thick. I want it to be able to dry fairly quick, but I am gonna just make sure that the cup is covered really well. And, and I wasn't sure if I was gonna cover the bottom of the cup if I was gonna leave it patina. I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it here. Cause I did just go ahead and trim the vinyl around the edge instead of bringing it around onto the bottom. Cause I thought, well, maybe I'll patina the bottom of the cup. So I did paint it and then I ended up going back over it with black paint just because I thought it flowed better with the cup. But I did wanna make sure that I got in all those little ridges. So if you're gonna patina the bottom, just make sure you run your brush through that little ridge down there to make sure that it gets down in there. So you have kind of a continuous flow of the, of the paint on the cup. And then I'm gonna paint the top half of the cup. So you can see I'm using you know a pretty good amount here, but I don't want it too thick. I just want it just as kind of a base primer here. And I've just got a fairly, you know, so about a three quarter inch uh, paintbrush here that I'm using and just applying it to the cup. And then I'm going to let that dry. It took about 30 minutes for it to dry before I'm going to come back in with my Metal Smith paints. And I will link Southern Bell Glitter in the description box below. Cindy was so nice to reach out to me and let me try these paints. And let me tell you, once I tried them, Y'all, she has created an obsession. Like, I had to have all the colors after that. I was like, oh my goodness, how do you even decide? There is a rusty activator, there's a green activator, and there's a turquoise activator. And they all do have very different effects on the different colors. So I have been playing with them for days now. I first tried this on a live, I believe in my Facebook group is where I did it the first time. And it worked out great. I did a couple more. It was a little bit of a learning curve. And so I thought, you know what? When I saw the lavender and the vinyl on this, I was like, I have to use these colors and do a patina on the top half of this cup. I was like, I've never done a split cup where it's half patina, half vinyl. What else can I do <laughs> with this vinyl <laughs> except for my latest obsession? And I could just literally sit here 24 hours a day right now playing with this paint. And then actually while I'm waiting on this cup to dry, I'm gonna go work on the 20, the true 22. So this one I'm gonna do is a three-way split. I'm gonna apply vinyl to the top half and the bottom half, and then I'm gonna do a one-inch strip in the center of this. Actually, I'm gonna use the same Metal Smith paints on. And so, but I'm still marking off the cup halfway. So if the cup's eight inches tall, I'm gonna mark it off at half. And then I'm gonna draw that line around the cup, and I'm actually gonna use that as kind of the center of where I'm gonna lay this one inch strip of tape. So I'm just using a, a painter's tape, but it's the one inch strip instead. So I'm gonna mark that off. I'm gonna use that as my line to where I'm gonna cut the vinyl on the bottom and the top half. And again, I'm gonna go through this fairly quick. If you've seen me wrap vinyl cups before, if not, I will link those tutorials in the description box below if you need to go back and reference some of those that go into more detail of how I vinyl wrap my cups. And you basically see I'm just going through the same process with my vinyl on the top and on the bottom. So I'm just wrapping it around the cup. I'm trimming off either the top or the bottom here. And then I'm pressing down where the tape is and I'm cutting along the tape line. So that'll be my edge. And I really tried to use all the things from the vinyl cottage, but there was just so much y'all. I couldn't get it all on two cups. And I really didn't want to do two cups necessarily in the tutorial, but then when they kind of came together and they matched, I was like, you know what? This tutorial might just be a little bit longer, but we're just going to go with it.
And then after I've got my vinyl cut, I'm gonna go back in and tape off the top and the bottom sections, just like I did on the other cup, because I definitely wanna protect my vinyl when I'm going in to paint my patina. Well, actually, when I'm gonna spray, when I'm gonna paint, but also when I'm gonna spray this activator. So I wanna make sure not just where I'm painting, that area is covered up, I wanna cover up all my vinyl. So then I am gonna take the same primer that I used before, and I'm gonna go ahead and apply that just right here to this stripe or in the center of the cup. So instead of doing like a glitter strip here, I just decided I was gonna patina this little strip in the middle. And I have just sanded this cup before applying my vinyl and laying this primer down. I haven't done anything else to it. I wiped it down with 91% rubbing alcohol just to kind of get the dust off from where I sand it. But I haven't done anything else to that before applying this paint. And this is the True 22 from the Steel Magnolia. This and the 24 Plump from the Steel Magnolia boats. I love vinyl wrapping these cups. This ridge around the bottom is so easy when I'm gonna pull it around the bottom. And I just like both of these styles. I will link them in the description box below as well as a discount code also. And so I'm gonna paint this and then I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry for about 30 minutes. So now I'm gonna take my other cup that is dry and I'm gonna start applying these paints. Now these paints have little metal flakes in them and so they have to be stirred up. So make sure if you get these paints that you stir them up really well and then to avoid me dipping back down into the container of the paint with a different color because you have to work really fast with these. You have to apply the activator spray while they're wet. So I just take my little medicine cups and then I like to take my little glitter spoon. Call me crazy y'all, but I don't like pouring stuff out of a can of paint, a container of paint where it gets all down the side and then you can't get the top back off after you've gotten it on the next time you go to get it. So I just take my little medicine cups, my little glitter spoon, and then I just scoop out a little bit. It doesn't take very much. You don't want it too thick on the cup, but I am gonna go in here and just stir up each one of my colors, then use my little glitter spoon, and then I'm just gonna dip up a little bit into my medicine cups. And really right here, this was more than I needed. And the silver was ru uh, rusted oyster, so I apologize. And then we're gonna use hard candy and then Contessa. So those are gonna be the three colors that I use from Miss Lillian's Metal Smith Patina Paints. And you can find them at Southern Bell Glitter. I will link them in the description box below, as well as a discount code for y'all. <laughs> so make sure you check it out. But these are the three colors that I thought would look really good together. This rusted oyster, I'm totally obsessed with. I think it is so pretty. Um, it looks so pretty on the cup. And then when you spray the rusty activator on it, it just looks so pretty. So again, I'm just gonna go in and stir these up, each one of them, put a little bit into the cup, and then we're gonna be ready to paint them on the cup really quick. Okay, now we've got our cup, and I'm just gonna paint these kind of randomly on the cup. You can just watch and see. You do have to work fairly quick here. I'm gonna try to paint and then blend them together as quick as I can, because when you spray these activators on there, it needs to be wet. So you don't want too much paint on here where I found that they might run, but you want enough on there where it'll stay wet until you can get all the colors on there and then spray the activator. So I try to work fairly quickly and you can layer these. So if you get one layer on there, you spray the activator, you let it sit overnight and it'll start working fairly quickly. Like you'll see it work fairly quick. And if you don't, if you're not happy with the end results here, like if you're not getting enough of the patina effect or the enough of rust, you can go layer them again. So you can layer them on top of each other without adding epoxy. You just go back in and you add another layer. So I do like that where you can kind of layer them up to get like a depth effect a little bit. But you can see I'm working fairly quick here. I'm using this rusted oyster to kind of blend the colors in. I like to be able to see the three colors, but then, you know, I definitely want them to be a little blended. So I'm just working fairly quick here. I'm wiping off my brush in between. And that's why I put these in the container, right? You can see where I'm dipping back down in there. I didn't want to mix my paints in the container. And then, sorry I got out of screen here for just a second. I'm trying to just do the bottom of the cup and I think it must have been hard for me to see at that angle. So I apologize to you guys. And then you can just, while you're in this stained steel coat here, you can just go back in and add a different color. So if you want more purple somewhere. So then I'm gonna take the turquoise activator here and I'm just gonna spritz it on the cup. So you're just kind of kind of spritz it on. You can just see like, I just do like one little spritz there, one spritz on the side, I turn it and do another little spritz. And then 
kind of just where I think I might want it, but I don't cover the whole cup. And then I'm gonna take the Rusty Activator here, and I'm just gonna kinda of do two little sprays with it too. So you don't want too much on here because it will run if you get too much of the activator on it. And then I just took a little sponge here and I'm just kind of blending it in. You don't wanna do this either until it dries. Like you just wanna kind of barely blend it in. It will pull the paint off the cup, number one I found with the sponge. And then also, if it's not wet, it's not gonna work. So you don't wanna pull the activator off. I'm just trying to use it to kind of blend the colors a little bit and then make sure it's not gonna run. But you definitely don't wanna do you don't want to sponge it so much to where it's not still wet and the activator won't work. And then I'm just going to set that one aside to let it dry overnight. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this cup. But I'm just going to do it on the center. So you can see I work pretty quick here. Um, this one, there's not a lot to blend. So I just kind of did an alternating color of the hard candy and the Contessa, the pink and the purple. And then I'm going to go back in with the rusted oyster here and just kind of use it along the sides just to help blend those colors in a little bit. Just kind of mesh them. There's not a lot of work surface here that you're like area that you're working with. So I thought I want to be able to still see the pink and the purple, but I love this rusted oysters. So of course, I had to use it to blend. And then I'm just going to do the same thing with the activators. And, it, and I'm not doing this in time lapse, y'all. This is like in real time. So you just kind of have to like work fast. Um, after watching some tutorials that Cindy's done and seeing Susanna and some other people work with these cups, just put them on there, go with it, use your sponge. <laughs> you know, I'm definitely like, I'm a perfectionist, so it's hard for me to kind of let go. But this is one of those things, just like put them on there, you know, randomly mix them the best you can, spray the activator. And then if you don't like the way it looks, you can always go back and add another layer on there. So. Um, I try to go more random here than I probably normally want to by nature. And then I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my turquoise activator and I'm just going to spray it. And y'all can see that I have a big, you know, the big tin container that I gl glitter in. I do set that down over my table just to kind of protect my surface area. So I kind of try to spray into that. So I used the turquoise activator and the rusty activator here again. And then I just took my sponge and I was just kind of dampening it. And so I let both of those cups dry overnight and you can see how gorgeous this is, y'all. Look how that turquoise activator works. The rusty activator looks. I mean, I'm just like, love the effect that you get with these activators and these paints. So I hope that I'm creating the same obsession as some of y'all <laughs> because I found a love here. I just love how this looks. So obviously now I've, it's the next day and I'm just gonna pull the tape off here. And then we are gonna go in with a layer of Countercultures Quick Coat to seal the patinas. But I really just love these paints. I know y'all are gonna get tired of hearing me say this. <laughs> so now I'm taking the other one here and I'm just gonna remove the tape from the top and the bottom of the vinyl. Uh, just to kind of see what we're working with on this cup as well. So you can just see what a pretty blend I thought this provided for the two bottles together without doing glitter. And then we are gonna go in with just a little bit of counterculture and seal these. So I have sealed all the ones that I did. Sorry here, my silicone brush just went flying off. <laughs> the little tip did. But um, I use these silicone brushes and you can get them on Amazon, they're really cheap. But I like applying my quick coat with these. So I'm just going to apply a thin layer. I definitely want to do it to the patina part, but I'm just going to go ahead and seal my vinyl with it as well. I've started sealing all my vinyl cups with this counterculture quick coat anyway, just so I can, so I know that I'm getting a good adherence between the epoxy and the cup. So I still, I've started sealing all my vinyl cups with this counterculture's uh, quick coat anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply it all over both of these cups. And I'm gonna let it dry for about, I'll probably let it dry 30, 45 minutes before I'm gonna go into a layer of epoxy. And then after I've let that dry, I am gonna go in with Countercultures Medium Viscosity Artist Resin. And I'm gonna use about 25 milliliters on each cup. I just wanna basically a thin coat. I'm gonna go in and add some vinyl. So, and there's not a lot of, you know, depth going on in this cup because there's no glitter. You, it takes a little bit to cover up the patina because it does kind of raise the paint a little bit, but not too much. So it shouldn't, shouldn't take too much. So both on this 24 plump and the, tw the true 22, I end up using about 20 to 25 milliliters of Countercultures medium viscosity. So I'm just gonna apply this. I'm gonna use my torch to pop any bubbles on both cups. And then I'm gonna let this coat sit for about six to eight hours before I'm gonna go in and do a little sanding and then apply some vinyl. 
And so I'm actually not using the vinyl that came in the mystery box. It did come with the polished metal adhesive vinyl in purple and rose, but I'm actually using this uh, gun metal that is from the Vinyl Cottage also. I think it's a chrome gun metal is what it's listed as on her website. But I'm just gonna apply a really thin strip. And then in the mystery box, she did uh, include a couple of decals. And so I'm gonna use, this is actually a vinyl adhesive decal, just a printed vinyl. And um, I'm gonna use this one and it's the Witch's Brew decal. So after I lay this strip down here in the center, and I just went into Cricut and I cut a square, I think 11 inches by 0.12. I will link it in the description box. And then I just kind of run that around there, trim that off, and then I'm gonna lay my decal right in the center of the top of the cut. And then I did decide that I wanted to cover the bottom of the cup in black just to kind of make it blend better. So I'm just gonna take some Rust-Oleum 2X matte black paint. I'm gonna spray it in the cup and I'm just gonna take my paper towel here and I'm gonna dip it down in there and then I'm just gonna dab it around the bottom of the cup to cover the cup in black. Just, I found that spray paint kind of blends it a little bit better. So you can kind of see, I'm gonna go over it here and I'm just gonna blend the bottom right around to the sides here. Just so that black kind of goes all the way around the bottom of the cup. I just did, I wasn't happy with it kind of being a break in the cup, I wanted that to kind of con be continuous from side to side in a darker color. And then I'm gonna go into the other cup and I'm gonna apply the same gunmetal vinyl strip right around the top and the bottom of my patinaed area here. And then I'm gonna put both of these cups on the turner and I'm gonna apply a layer of Countercultures Quick Coat again because I like to seal any kind of chrome or holographic vinyl just so it won't lift off the cup. And then also on the other cup, I have my decal. So I do wanna go ahead and just put a layer of Quick Coat over there to seal that down to the cup as well. So I'm just going in here and I'm just using my silicone brush again and then I'm just going to apply a thin coat here just to cover up that center stripe and then my decal here with the counterculture quick coat and then I'm going to apply it to the other cup just a very thin coat here I just don't want this vinyl to lift so I have really good results with my vinyl not lifting when I apply this counterculture's quick coat first. And then after I let that quick coat dry for about 30 minutes, I'm gonna go into a layer of epoxy here. And I'm just gonna use again about 25 milliliters. It probably didn't even take 25 milliliters. I, honestly, it probably was 20, about 20 milliliters of countercultures, medium viscosity artist resin. I'm gonna apply about the same amount to both cups here at this time. Then I'm gonna use my torch to pop any bubbles and I'm gonna let this coat dry for about six to eight hours. Um, the one I'm going to let sit, the other one I'm going to go, the True 22, I'm going to end up doing a power wash over. So I do want it dry because I want to sand a few areas before I go into a power wash. So I let, I let it dry for about eight hours. So now I'm going to take the cup outside. I'm going to use my Dawn Power Wash and I'm going to kind of spray around a circle. I want a center circle here that's going to be pretty light colored so that I can put the water slide on it. So I'm actually using first London Gray as the base. So I thought I might use that color. I rinsed it off and it just wasn't, it was still a little bit too dark. So I end up going over pretty much the same area though. I like to do this layering thing. So I just go right into the next color. So I've got the London Gray on the bottom and then I'm gonna use Ivory Bisque as my top color. So I'm just kind of spraying an area. If you can see, like I wanna leave a center circle that's gonna be covered pretty well with the spray paint. So you can kind of see I'm gonna have that center circle there and then I just kind of work my way out, but I am gonna go back in with rubbing alcohol and clean this up. So I basically just Dawn Power Wash, spray paint, rinse off, Dawn Power Wash, spray paint, rinse off. <laughs> And so after I've let that dry for about an hour, I, know, I can tell it's good and dry, I'm gonna go in with some 91% rubbing alcohol and just where the paint stands to kind of spray out, I just wanna clean up all those areas. So I just don't want a lot of it kind of going in stray areas. So anywhere that you just wanna kind of clean it up a little bit, you can see here, I'm just gonna go back in with my rubbing alcohol and kind of narrow down that area of spray paint. So I'm just gonna clean up the outside and then just kind of narrow it down if that makes sense. So. You can pull as much of this as you want to or as a little of it off you. I just kind of went where it was more in like a circular area. One of the areas I kind of wanted it to go stray just so it was kind of out of the ordinary. So I left it at the top. But uh, the, since the spray paint, spray, spray paint does tend to kind of expand out around the cup when I'm spraying, I just tried to clean off the rest of the cup really. And I use a paper towel for the most part. And then when you wanna get into some of those little areas, just take a Q-tip and dip it down on your rubbing alcohol. And that way you can really get in those areas good. 
I found just using a Q-tip also. So I just kind of alternate between the two of those. And then after I've got it cleaned off like I want it to, I am gonna go into a layer, another layer of Countercultures Medium Viscosity Artist Resin. I'm gonna use about 25 milliliters here, between 20 and 25. I usually mix up 25, so sorry, I keep varying. I usually mix up 25, but it rarely ever takes that much. So I like to have a thinner coat. So I'm just gonna apply that, uh, use my torch to pop any bubbles, and I'm gonna let that coat dry because I am gonna put a water slide on. I'm gonna let this coat dry for about eight hours before I'm gonna go in and add my water slide. And I'm just gonna take some warm water and I'm gonna use the water slide that came from the vinyl cottage and in the mystery box and it's printed in reverse image. So that way you don't pull the paper out from underneath. You just lay it face down on the cup and you slide the paper off. So you guys will see me here. I'm just gonna find my placement. It's been sitting in the, wa in the warm water for just a minute and I can see that it's moving. The whole thing's moving when I you know, try to move it around on the backing. It does move pretty easily. So I'm just gonna find my placement and then I'm gonna go ahead and press it down and then you can see the paper just slides right off when you do it face forward like that. Now I'm gonna take my little silicone brush here again and just smooth out any water bubbles that might be underneath that. I kinda just go around it just to make sure there's no water bubbles and then I'll wet a paper towel and then wipe it down again until I make sure that it's properly adhered to the cup. And then I did not sand any of that before this just because you, you want the surface to be shiny. So then I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna cut a circle. I will reference a previous tutorial, basically any of my vinyl tutorials, I cut this circle and put on the bottom. I cut it the diameter of of um, the bottom of the cup and then I just place it on there and I am going to go in with a layer of quick coat to seal my water slide so after I've let the water slide dry for about 30 45 minutes I'm just going to go in with a little bit of quick coat here and just cover up the vinyl I mean the water slide here to make sure that it's sealed on the cup and it's not going to lift and then I'm going to go into my next layer of epoxy which will be my last layer of epoxy here and again I'm using countercultures medium viscosity and their artist resin and I'm going to apply a coat to both of these cups this will be the final coat and I'm using about 20 to 25 milliliters on each cup and then I'm gonna use my torch to pop any bubbles and then we're gonna have our final designs finally, y'all. And so here's our final design. I just love how these turned out for Halloween. Um, I love the fact that April's doing a mystery box that includes some coordinating patterns for everyone. So I hope that you guys like it. I am totally obsessed with these patinas. You guys know how much I love my vinyl. So when you combine the two, I was just like a kid in a candy store and <laughs> working on these cups. So thank y'all so much for watching. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and ask. Join my Dixie Darlings Tumblr's Facebook group. That's a great way to get in touch with me directly. I try to respond to everybody. Um, and I love to see what your creations are. So please tag me and share with us what you create if you got the mystery box. And if not, just some of these patina looks or whatever it is that you want to share, just come join us. And join us on Sunday nights. We have so much fun. So thank y'all for watching. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll see y'all again soon.